Hello teacher, hello students. Welcome to today's lesson on the arguments of the industrial sector versus the rest of the economic sectors. I hope you've learned about the definition of industrialization in the previous non-plasma lesson. Let me recap the main points of your previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we learned that industrialization takes place over a long period of time. It requires the application of modern science and technology in production and that it causes structural transformation in the composition of output and the pattern of employment. Furthermore, we learned that the manufacturing sector plays the most important and dynamic role in industrialization. Let's start our discussion of the arguments. There are five basic arguments that believe the industrial sector's development should be given priority over the other sectors. Before I present these arguments, I want you to discuss in groups and list at least three of the basic arguments that are forwarded in favor of the industrial sector. Have you jotted down at least three of the arguments that justify the idea that the industrial sector development should be given priority over the other sectors? The five basic arguments are the development argument, the employment argument, the balance of payment argument, the linkage argument, the saving or surplus argument. Students, if in your group discussion you have mentioned the arguments I have just listed, you have answered the question correctly. Now, let's discuss the arguments in detail, starting with the development argument. The development argument holds that there is a direct relationship between development and industrialization. That is, the more developed nations are better industrialized and the less developed nations are less industrialized. Students, let's proceed to the second argument, which is the employment argument. The employment argument holds that the industrial sector has more potential to create job opportunities for the rapidly growing urban populations of developing countries than any other sector. Students, 
unlike this argument for the industrial sector, the Agricultural-Led Development Strategy, or ADLI, gives priority to agricultural development to achieve industrialization in the long run. I hope you remember the reason for that, as we had discussed it in one of our previous lessons. If so, I want you to state the reason why ADLI gives priority to the agricultural development in relation to the creation of employment opportunities. you remember the reason. ADLI gives priority to agricultural development in relation to creating employment opportunities because about 80% of the Ethiopian population lives in rural areas, depending heavily on agriculture. Furthermore, agriculture has more potential to use labor extensively. This is one of the basic arguments Ethiopia has been presenting in various relevant national and international forums. However, due to the underdevelopment of the agricultural sector in the past or before Adli, the rural population had been less productive and underemployed. Students, note also that Adli envisages industrialization in the long run. That is when the majority of the Ethiopian population live in urban areas and be employed in the industrial sector. However, as a starting strategy, Ethiopia has given priority to the development of agriculture. As we said, the main reason for this, among many other reasons, is to generate employment opportunity to the majority of the Ethiopian population. Now, let's proceed to the next argument in favor of industrialization. That is, the balance of payments argument. The balance of payment argument states that a developed industrial sector, in general, generates more foreign currency as compared to the agricultural sector. That is, industrialization helps developing nations to elevate their balance of payments problems. Students, before we see the balance of argument in the context of ADLI, let's make sure that you understand the meaning of balance of payments, abbreviated as BOP and the BOP problem. Now, I want you to do the third activity by discussing with the students sitting next to you. 
The question is, what does balance of payments problem mean? How does a trade deficit affect the balance of payment? I hope you've answered the question. Balance of payment refers to the difference between the amount of foreign currency a country pays to and the amount it receives from the rest of the world. The balance of payments problem occurs when a country's payments of dollars to the rest of the world exceeds its receipt of dollars from the rest of the world. A country pays dollars abroad for imports, debt repayment, aid to abroad, and so on. A country receives dollars from abroad from exports, loan, aid from abroad, and so on. Therefore, when total payments exceed total receipts, the balance of payments problem occurs. The reason behind the balance of payment argument is that when the industrial sector develops, the country produces more industrial products and increases its export earnings, which in turn helps solve the balance of payments problem. It is often argued that the terms of trade is in favor of industrial products as compared to agricultural products and prices of agricultural products often fluctuate and may sometimes decrease. However, as it is explicitly stated in Adley, our country cannot simply jump into industrialization. 
the dollars we need to import the machinery for our industries is expected to be generated from the agricultural exports. Otherwise, industrialization that ignores agricultural development may even cause the balance of payments problem. Students, let's discuss the next argument, that is, the linkage argument. This argument emphasizes that if industrial development is directed to use local raw materials, it can create strong linkages among the different sectors of the domestic economy. That is, the industrial sector creates a backward linkage by consuming agricultural raw materials. It also creates a forward linkage with the market by producing consumer and producer goods for the entire economy. Now, let's compare the linkage argument forwarded in favor of the industrial sector with the argument implied in Adley. This takes us to the fourth activity, which you have to answer individually based on our previous lessons. The question is, according to Adley, which sector is assumed to have the dynamisms to create forward and backward linkages? Please explain your answer. I hope you remembered our previous discussion in relation to Adley while you were answering this question. Though the industrial sector is to take the leading role in the future, Adley recognizes agricultural growth as the driving force for economic growth and industrialization. Thus, Adley recognizes and promotes internal forward and backward linkages of the agricultural sector with the industrial sector. Students, let's now see the final argument that supports the idea that industrial development should be given priority over the other sectors. This argument is the saving or surplus argument. The saving or surplus argument is based on the idea that profit margins in the industrial sector are higher than those in agriculture, and this may lead to higher levels of saving. Students, in today's lesson, we explained and examined the arguments on the industrial sector versus the rest of the economic sectors. 
Before I wind up today's discussion, let me mention the arguments once again. The arguments are the development argument, the employment argument, the balance of payment argument, the linkage argument, the saving or surplus argument. Students, we have come to the end of today's lesson. In the next non-plasma lesson, you will learn more about the arguments of industrial sector versus the rest of the economic sectors. Next time, I'll come with another program. Until then, goodbye teacher, goodbye students. Thank you.